today's episode's a little bit different from normal ones. It'll still be full of old technology, but it's more of kind of a self-indulgent walk through my past, uh, specifically my past in retail and hospitality EPOS solutions. Hopefully you'll still find something interesting to see though. Right, here we are. This is my ancient Windows XP laptop. I use it for well, it's got a 3.5 inch floppy drive in, runs XP, so it's useful for running a lot of software. A lot of that software is now redundant because of things like Grease Weasel, Weasel Exist, um, but as this video proves, it's still quite useful for other stuff. So, you won't be recording off this screen, don't worry. Um, in the background there, you can probably see OBS, uh, and uh, this actually is running over there on that screen over there, so we'll be getting, hopefully, direct feeds, um, which I, uh, I should start. Right, so this video is really about how um, I developed or helped to develop uh, EPOS solution from scratch. So EPOS, if you don't know, electronic point of cell, is, um, well, if you go into any re modern restaurant, you'll see there's little terminals where they put your order in and uh, maybe they've got a handheld device that they do it and they keep track of everything. It prints your bill out, it sends orders to the kitchen, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. It was controlled for a long time by a lot of really big players um, and, uh, me and a couple of other friends, we started a company that to make this uh, quite a few years ago. Uh, the company's been bought out by other ones since, and uh, I left it way before that point as well. But uh, we did fairly well, considering. Um, especially considering two of us uh, had no idea about EPOS at that point. The other guy knew an awful lot about EPOS, which was uh, was good. We wouldn't have been able to do it otherwise. Um, but anyway, we started developing this uh, in Visual Basic, which was going to be kind of a prototype to prove we could do this. As always happens with startups, uh, it kind of ran away from us and we realized we were going to need to start selling things a lot quicker. And so the prototype became the actual um, product. And so uh, the product ended up being made in Visual Basic. I don't mind Visual Basic, I'll be honest. It's, uh, um, it gets a bad rap, uh, but I think it's quite a nice it's quite a nice development system. Let's load up Visual Basic. I have made a small uh, program already, so we don't have to go through that, because, yeah, there's no point going through that. But uh, I will explain some of the components it's using, because it uses a very specific set of components. So here we are in Visual Basic staffing. I've got a recent, and we have EPOS video, which we can load up. Uh, if you've never used Visual Basic, this is the... Uh, the main window this is our code we've got the forms as well which we'll see when we run it anyhow uh, but more importantly are these icons over to the side here these are opos modules so opos opos stands for ole for retail pos and these are basically uh, small ocx uh, add-ons that allow that had kind of built-in functionality to connect to uh, different EPOS solution uh, hardware bits and pieces. So over here, obviously we've not mentioned this yet, we will mention it properly soon. This is a printer and it has up here, where are we? Here we are. We have OPOS POS printer. So this allows you to talk to a printer. Uh, we've got uh, cash drawer. I wanted to get a cash drawer, but then I realized that would be ridiculous. They're large, they're metal, there's no other use for them. Um, but i just kind of explain, uh, most of this stuff is kind of, it uses RJ11 cables, like if we look on the back of this, I think you can probably just about see there, that port next to the power lead, it says DK on it, that sounds for draw kicker. So it basically fires uh, a solenoid in the cash drawer to fire it open, and it can also tell if the drawer is open or closed, so you can keep track of how often things are open and such like, and if they're not closed enough. Um, uh, Opos key lock, you can tell if a key lock is open or closed. Totals, which is like a totaling system. Um, light display, that's the customer displays that you see like on the back of retail tills, which have your readout of what you're ordering. Um, AYCR is like a magnetic ink reader for, for by reading in checks and stuff like that. MSR is magnetic swipe, so it would swipe cards for uh, either logging in or loyalty, what have you. Uh, yeah, pause printer we've done. 
uh, check scanner, yeah, that can scan normal checks. And the final one, electronic journal, which just it lets you have like a readout of stuff for it in a hard copy style system if you really want to keep track of what's going on. Anyway, so the, these are pretty easy to use. If we go to, this is our form, and we can see we've got a few of these here. We're not using all of them, again. <laughs> I didn't get the hardware because uh, it would have been ridiculous. But you see, you just drag these on there, and then if we look at the uh, actual properties over here, you can see there's several properties that, that basically detail uh, various items. We can see this better in code, probably. So if we go to how we set up the actual printer, uh, init pos devices, don't worry about the code. I had to relearn Visual Basic because I've not used it in many, many years. Oh, I've lost the, oh, there it is, there we are, right. So this is the this is our OCX object. Uh, this is the name of the, uh, the printer. I'll show you how that's set up in a minute. Um, so this, all this does really is open up like a registry to, to work out what this, this printer is and its properties. Claim device is more of a check really. It checks to see if you can get access, uh, sole access to that printer because you have to have dedicated access to the printer to use it. And device label is the thing that literally takes control of that, that thing so nothing else can claim it. Uh, yeah, that's the, um, the quality. And set bitmap allows you to set, uh, you, well, you know, of receipts, they usually have like the shop logo at the top that's what you do that's how you do that uh, and these are just uh, debug prints to show if there's any errors that pop up uh, result code generally is like a, an area of code and then extended gives you more information and that's all listed in the documentation for this it's quite good and the uh the print the sort of other side of that is if you unload it uh, allows the device we use for something else it releases it and it closes it so those are the opposite functions to those uh, and then obviously we need to print and we do that by uh, there's lots of escape sequences so this uh, this is the escape character here and you use that with these different things there's lots of them but this top one this basically tells it to print the first bitmap which is our logo uh, n is kind of normal so no functioning on there ca center aligned and there's all sorts of things for doing like bold strike through all kinds of things like that uh, depending on the printer as well, you can set colours and stuff if, if it's actually a colour printer. And yeah, and then if we look down, we can see print normal, which just does a print. Um, and we're doing a calculation there based on how many characters the printer can hold and uh, working out the spaces to get everything lined up properly. There are lots of ways of doing that, but that's kind of the easiest. And this last one, FP, it feeds it and it cuts it as well. It fires the, the receipt cutter. So, oh, the print barcode. I just had there for one of the samples. Uh, you can print a barcode on it. It's got a built-in barcode um, system, and you can tell it what type of barcode, and uh, all sorts of things like that. So, anyway, how do we find do set up that printer? So, if we go here and we go to program. Oh no, no, come on, programs. OPOS and we've got setup POS here. So this is a little program that you use to create your profiles. So under devices, we've got all these kinds of devices, see lots of them that we, well, we barely touched on hardly any of them. Uh, and then you basically add in your device and you give your device a name. Uh, we call it unit one, doesn't matter what it's called really, as long as you call it the same thing in code. And if we well, open up, Check Health Interactive, that just checks to see if the printer's working. It will fail the moment because it's off. Um, device specific settings, so these are all the different settings you need for this specific device. So that's how we can set a bitmap, but if you want to do it beforehand and save it in the memory. Uh, if it's color, you can set kind of different sets for that. What it does with, with statuses and uh, bits like that. And communication settings is kind of the more important one. So this basically lets you set up virtual ports. You see our port is set to these values, which is what our printer is set to. If you saw, if you follow me on um, social media or you look on the uh, on YouTube, you'll see that I did print out, a I did show a test as a short, a little day, which was the test of this here printer. So that's not what anyone cares about. What everyone cares about is watching it print stuff. 
So if we run this, this will fail because I forgot to turn the printer on. <laughs> if we turn the printer on now, <laughs> this might, but I don't know if it caught it, but I guess we'll find out quite quickly. So yeah, it's just a very, very simple interface. We can add in a few items like that. And then if we hit pay, oh, there we go. It's set to letter quality, so it's a bit slow, but there you go. We have, oh, focal, white balance, focus, you can do it. Probably not, but anyway, that's our receipt. I will make sure we get a better uh, video of it, but yeah, that's our receipt. It's, um, it's very simple, missing the logo, don't know why. We'll try rerunning the uh, the application. It may be that it failed to do the the bitmap at the time, or it might be that we killed the. No, that should be fine. Yep, yeah, just do a few more of these again, and then do pay again. So we get. Oh, there we go. Right there we go. Yes, it was just because we didn't get the thing turned on on time to set it up. So again, I'll do a better picture of that and show that. <coughs> and that on this printer certainly is a, a kind of a, a one bit image. Um. And it's a Windows, it's a BMP file as well, which is really interesting when you've got modern machines to make, by the way. Um, fortunately, of course, we've got this one, which helped us. So yeah, I mean, that's kind of um, the basics of this. If you say you have a drawer, you can kick it open. There are simulators, but uh, I mean, you know, when you can actually just get hold of a receipt printer, why would you use a simulator? <laughs> but the simulators just pop up um, little dialogues which show you what the status of the thing is. And so you can work out if, you're, um, if what you're doing is working correctly. Um, there are other ways to talk to this stuff before we've learned about uh, OPOS because again we didn't know what we were doing to begin with um, we were just directly calling these using literally as Windows printers and using the, the print spooler on Windows to actually print stuff which works it does work um, but the, using the OPOS you can do sort of clever things like um, we had uh, print demons which we made which just sat there and, and took control of the kitchen printers when they needed to print something and then release them so other jobs could go in and things like that which is a lot harder if you're doing it as a windows printer so yeah um you know that's it it's um if you look at the technology i mean it's moved on now obviously but a lot of the the basics are the same like you used to get terminals which were effectively just specially designed computers sometimes not even that which generally came with a touch screen of course um uh and the really like the the higher up ones would have the the rj11 ports in the back so you could connect everything straight to the machine and run it straight from the machine and things like that they were just serial really but it was all um easy to connect uh, and um, run. The, the cache drive, I think, had to be special because it, it requires that 24, I think it was a 24 volt server, I believe. So it requires a bit um, of extra gumph uh, going through it. But um, yeah, uh, it was an interesting time. It was, uh, we got the, the software written relatively quickly. It went into quite a few restaurants. Uh, people by and large enjoyed it, I think because we were doing something different. So all of the older companies have been really programming from the same hymn book for such a long time because they didn't know any other way to do it uh, whereas we came in we didn't know what we were doing so we just made it how we thought it should work and uh, i think it worked quite well we had it in pubs as well as well as restaurants and the pub uh people certainly found it easier to use than the other solutions so yeah anyway it was just a brief glimpse into epos solutions um thanks for watching <laughs> if you like the video please hit like if you really like the video please hit subscribe if you didn't like the video or you have something else to say then please leave it in the comments below and obviously if you have experience in this uh world as well and you want to talk about it then absolutely put it in the uh in the comments it's always nice to hear from uh, some of the history of this stuff as well as my stories as well um don't forget to hit the bell icon to get told about future videos and if you want to help us out financially um you can join youtube membership you can join patreon you can buy merch uh but really if you just want to like share comment um that's really helpful in its own and we appreciate all of you see you next time the present is horrible the future looks bleak